Hi guys, this is a quick video on how to add Linux ISOs with persistence to your easy to boot USB drive. I've outlined the steps here for you and I want to take uh, this ISO which is an Ubuntu ISO 14.04.1 and I want to add uh, this to the easy to boot drive and also enable persistence. So you can see from the instructions here the first thing we need to do is copy the ISO to the required folder. So here's my USB drive, it's the H drive and uh, this is the root folder on the drive and I need to find a place to copy uh, the Ubuntu file to. So as always the, uh, the folder menus are listed in here, they're in capital letters and uh, we'll copy this to one of these uh, folders. So let's pick uh, Linux just because uh, it is Linux and the folder is empty at the moment now we've got a couple of choices here I can copy the ISO into the ISO Linux folder and if I do this it will be listed in the Linux submenu or I can make a subfolder inside ISO Linux uh, and put the ISO in there so for the purposes of this demonstration I'll just put the ISO into this folder first and then later on I'll move it into another folder to show you how that changes the uh, menu system. And we could change the name of this um, if we want to. As long as it uh, ends in uh, .iso we can boot to this uh, and run it. However for persistence we need to have a menu file or .menu file. So we need to find this. So if you go to the ISO folder and then go to the docs folder. This is where all the documentation uh, for easy, easy to boot is, the utilities uh, and various other folders. Um, and uh, we want to find the um, sample menu files folder, which is here. And uh, the new version of easy to boot has these uh, subfolders in there, so you can f easily find the uh, menu file that you want. So we'll look in Linux. Now we need to find Ubuntu and we've got an Ubuntu 12, we've got an Ubuntu 13, so our Ubuntu file is AMD 64 14 and the nearest one we've got to that is this one which is Ubuntu 13.04 so we'll just copy this file into the Linux folder here we are and uh, we'll change the name of it just so that it looks nicely. Actually the, the name doesn't actually matter the name of the menu file doesn't actually matter at all, you can call it anything you like uh, but just to make it uh, more obvious I'll change this uh, to match the ISO file. Okay, next thing we need to do is um, edit this file so I'll edit that with um, Notepad, I've got Notepad Plus here so I'll use that and here we are. So the first thing we need to do is change the name of the file. And the easiest way to do that is to cut and paste it in. So I'll just highlight the name of the file here and I'll cut and paste that in. Now you need to look in the menu file and make sure uh, look for any sort of .iso file names and uh, change any occurrence of the file name. So dollar home dollar in this case means wherever this menu file is located. So if it's in slash ISO slash Linux, then dollar home dollar will be translated automatically to slash ISO slash Linux. Uh, and you see there's another uh, file here which is called uh, PF and uh, at the moment it's Ubuntu 1304RW. Uh, so We'll just change that to match 1404. Just so, this is just so that we can tell when we see that in the root folder of the easy to boot drive, we'll know that uh, it's associated with our Ubuntu 1404 uh, 1, should we say, RW file. So now read the instructions up here. This will always tell you exactly what to do. You don't need to change any of this text, these are just comments. So it says to make an ext2 file using RM prep USB in the root of the drive. File name is 1304RW. Well, we've changed that now, so it's uh, it should be Ubuntu 14041 slash RW, and the volume name is Casper RW. Now, 
Uh, we shouldn't change the volume name. This this usually needs to be always Casper hyphen RW for most Linux uh, distros. But the instructions in the menu will tell you exactly what the volume name needs to be. But it's important that you don't change the volume name. The file name can be anything you like, but the volume name must be whatever it says in the menu file. So let's just make a an ext2 persistent file using RM prep USB like it tells us to here. I'll just cut and paste this uh, file name here so we get it exactly right. And we'll run RM prep USB. So here's RM prep USB and we've got the uh, our USB, USB USB drive here. And what we need is the create ext2. So now we need the name of the ext2 file which we'll cut and paste that must be exactly right obviously to match the name that we've got uh, in our menu file. Click on OK. It'll then prompt us for the volume label which is already set to Casper RW by default for RM Prep USB so that's what we want so just say OK. And lastly we have the size. Don't make this too big to start with just try it out first. Uh, make sure that uh, it's all working and then if you want to you can increase the size of this later. Obviously if you've got an NTFS drive you can make files bigger than 4 gigabytes. If you've got a FAT32 drive then this file can uh, only be uh, less than 4 gigabytes in size. So um, just for the sake of speed I'll use 200 because it's uh, quicker to create. It just prompts you to say do you want to create it and then convert it. This takes uh, a while, it depends on the speed of your USB drive. And here it's finished. So uh, now finally we need to uh, make this file contiguous. So in our prep USB you can click on uh, you can you can do control F2 or you can right click as it says there in the tooltip you can right click on the uh, drive and it'll run make contiguous. Uh, the other thing you can do is to run the make this drive contiguous.cmd uh, windows script which is in the root of your USB drive. So just double click on that and it'll just run WinContig on the drive. It's finished so quickly I couldn't uh, show it to you. Uh, the file should be on a fresh drive. The files will be contiguous anyway so it will run very quickly. So now we should be good to go. So I'll just show you we've got our ISO, Linux and we've got our two files in there. The menu file and the ISO file. Okay so this is what you'll see when you boot to your easy to boot drive now. Now if we go to the Linux menu, I'll do Control L, and you can see we've got two menu entries here. One is the ISO file and the other is the persistent one. We've got see we've got 1304 there because I didn't change the uh, menu item. Uh, so if I run the first one it'll just run the ISO as normal without persistence. If I run the second one it should run it with persistence. So let's just try that now. There we go. So um, if we change something on here, so I can do a new a new document maybe like that, and then I'll just uh, reboot and see what happens. you can see. Let's remember the changes and we've got our, our document is still there. So let's just go back and fix that uh, menu. So here's our menu file and what we want to do is change this description so I'll just say uh, Ubuntu 14.04.1 
save it. Now we should be good to go. So here's the menu again. We'll go to the Linux folder. And you can see here that uh, we've got just the Ubuntu entry. And if we boot to that, There we go, we get to the same uh, desktop as before. Yeah, well, when you close this down, yeah, you, you shouldn't just uh, abort the uh, uh, session, so don't just unplug the USB drive or switch off the system, because you might corrupt the persistence file. So you should always uh, close it down nicely. Okay, so that's how to add one Ubuntu uh, ISO file. But what if you've got more Ubuntu ISO files? Well, you just repeat the process exactly the same, but choose a different name for the ext2 file that you're going to create. So I'll just quickly show you how to do that. Uh, you just uh, copy the files that you've already got. So let's go back to the ISO Linux Ubuntu folder, and we need to cro copy this uh, persistent menu file. So I'll just make a copy here, and uh, say I want to do exactly the, run exactly the same ISO. This is you can you can run any ISO you like, but just to make it uh, uh, difficult for ourselves, um, exactly the same ISO. Uh, but I want uh, this to run for my friend uh, Mary. So let's just call it Mary, okay? And then we'll edit that. Now it's using the same ISO, so we keep this exactly the same, but the persistence file will need to be different. So it's Ubuntu Mary hyphen RW, and we'll save that file. And we go back to our prep USB, click on the create ext2 file, and this time you want Ubuntu Mary hyphen RW as the file name. Casper RW stays the same because that's what Linux looks for. And then the size of the uh, file can be anything you can, again you like. Okay, that's done. And we should now have um, Ubuntu Mary here. So let's just test that. Oh, but before we do, um, let's just change the menu as well. So I'll say for Mary on there, so it should now appear in the menu as for Mary. So let's boot up to uh, Easter Boot again. Go to the Linux menu, and there we've got our two entries. One's the normal one, and one is for Mary. And this will use the other persistence file, so uh, Mary can have her own version of Ubuntu. And there we go, it's a new version. And if you don't want those menus to be in the Linux folder, then just move them. So in this case we'll take the Ubuntu folder and we'll move it to main menu. Like that. You can see the files are in here. We'll run WinContig Win again. That's very quick. So let's just check that this works. You can see here that we've got it in the main menu as the first entry, first item, with our uh, Mary one as the second item. And we'll boot to the uh, Mary one. Now earlier I added a Mary new document to the desktop on this uh, version of Ubuntu. So if we've got the right persistence file, we should see a document called Mary on the Ubuntu desktop. So just to summarize, you could do this with uh, any Linux file that there is a .mnu file for. So look in the sample menu folder and see if you could find a file there that's got persistence in the file name for the .mnu file. And um, usually, as long as it's a uh, 
a reasonably similar version um, then it will work and you can just modify the file name and you can add any number of uh, Linux ISOs you like as long as they support persistence and as long as I've got the menu there if you don't find the menu that um, that works uh, you can always email me or contact me from the, on the Easterbit website and I'll try and help you out not all um, Linux ISOs support persistence though so um, you might be unlucky I hope you found this uh, video informative and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube videos and look at my blog. The details will be below the video.